Hello, my name is Guy Wallace, and I'd like to share with you what I learned from Gary Rumler and Tom Gilbert back in 1979 about guidance. This is all about performance competence, the ability to perform tasks, to produce outputs, to stakeholder requirements. In September of 1979, I was given a copy of Praxis Reports, which was published back in September, October of 1970. When I got it, it was already highlighted. This is about instructional guidance. Now, guidance is one term for what is also known as job aids or electronic performance support systems, quick reference guides, performance support, workflow learning, and if you think about it, it's the same thing as standard operating procedures. All are instructional interventions with the emphasis on instructional. And they are all formal instructional interventions, not something that you just by happenstance find on YouTube or in a file drawer that's going to help you and guide you in your performance tasks. What I learned was that during analysis, I needed to start thinking about what might be addressed via guidance or job aids or performance support versus being supported by training. This was not to decide what to do for sure, but if, if it was worthy to address, then how should we go about addressing it? Again, I learned this back in 1979. One of the quotes in the Praxis reports was, one of the superstitions in the training business is that skills have no value unless they are fixed in our memories. Words of wisdom. They also said that using guidance materials instead of formal training is one approach to minimizing the time and costs without sacrificing results. The Praxis reports called out three types or levels of guidance. In ascending orders of complexity, they are the directory, the ensampler, and the query. The directory is the most familiar form. We use it all the time, step-by-step -step guidance, checklists, worksheets, etc. The ensampler is used when judgment is required rather than just structured procedures. The ensampler, in most cases, as they say, gives the user a number of examples that they can refer to when making decisions about the task at hand. The query is also used when judgments are so complex or subtle that the instructions and examples will not suffice. Also, the query is helpful for introducing new techniques to people who might be offended by more rudimentary types of guidance. In the Praxis reports, they refer to paper computers as one way to make visible and tangible the intangible and invisible decisions that must be made by the performer. You need to read the Praxis report on this. So, guidance or training? Well, you use guidance when tasks involve many simple steps, allow instructions to be read during performance, where small errors in performance can produce significant negative consequences, and therefore you're trying to avoid that. The tasks are performed only infrequently, and so counting on somebody to memorize and remember that is problematic. And tasks for accuracy generally more important than speed. Tasks that are assigned small instructional budgets. Well, you use training when tasks require speed is more important than accuracy, where the tasks where reading instructions would interfere with the performance and where small errors are not usually costly. How I've operationalized this going back to the late 70s and early 80s was I saw this as three options. Standalone performance support, which back then I called job aids. Option two was performance support embedded in training. And option three was training for memorization and skills. Again, it was during analysis when I started thinking about this, not trying to decide what to do for sure, but if we were to address it, how would we go about addressing this? 
Standalone performance support is basically something that's self-paced in my language. Performance support and training could be handled in group-paced training, self-paced training, or structured coaching. Training with practice for memorization and skills development could be handled also in all three modes, group-paced, self-paced, and structured coaching. Again, I think it's important to start thinking about these things as you conduct your performance analysis efforts. The standalone performance support is where a target audience might have enough prior knowledge and skills and a job aid and guidance might be sufficient. You just need to let the target audience know where and how to access them. Who can confirm this decision? Master performers from the workflow. Option two, performance support embedded in training where the target audience may not have enough prior knowledge and skills for some high risk or high reward performance and a job aid guidance might be insufficient and too risky. So that the job aid guidance is embedded in performance based training to teach the learner how to access, give them the orientation, a demonstration perhaps, and practice with feedback or many sessions of practice with feedback. Again, who can confirm this decision? master performers from the workflow. Option three, training for memorization and skills. In some performance contexts, as the Praxis reports provided, there might not be enough time to refer to a job aid or guidance for high risk and high reward performance. And the situation might call for memory on demand, performance on demand. And you'd need not only initial performance-based training for orientation, demonstration, and practice with feedback, but also continuous spaced learning for fighting off the forgetting curve. Who can confirm this decision? Master performers from the workflow. Again, these are my three options in how I operationalized the concepts that I learned from Runler and Gilbert way back in 1979. Now, because the volume of job aids and guidance can be rather large and might be in need of some constant maintenance in some performance contexts, you need to give some thought to empowering your clients and teach them how to develop, store, administrate, and maintain their own high priority needs. Help your clients become self-sufficient and not dependent on you. And remember, don't develop it if you're not willing to maintain it. Again, in 1979, I was given this practice report. It didn't make it out of my metal file cabinets and into a digital form until 2018. Here is the URL for accessing this yourself or search on my website at www.epic.biz. This was about instructional guidance for performance competence, which is the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements, whether that's through a learning mechanism for memorization and skill development, or simply guidance, job aids, performance support, etc. Thank you and have a good day.